Did you ever have a narcissist mirror you? Maybe like mirror your good traits or look a certain way or act a certain way. They all of a sudden have the same likes and dislikes and movie preferences and ideas and thoughts and all these things. And you're like, wow, I found the perfect person. Well, there's also the aspect that a lot of times narcissists will mirror on the opposite side. Not just all these positive things, but sometimes these negative things or these vulnerable things or different issues or concerns that you might bring up that they use oftentimes in arguments to be able to flip it back on you, to be able to reflect a little bit back on you. If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness, growth, healing, and change. And we do it on multiple platforms, dropping small nuggets of truth each and every day. TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, all those, and also under Raw Motivations, under Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, all those things. You can look us up under Raw Motivations, like, share, review, share it with someone because you never know who you might impact, who you might help. If you don't have community, if you don't have people around you supporting you in your journey right now, I want to encourage you to go to narcapp.com. N-A-R-C-A-P-P, -P, narcapp.com. Stands for Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Community. Community of like-minded people to help you heal, grow, and change. To get advice, to take courses, to journal the truth, to track no contact, to log into weekly lives, to answer questions, to interact, to share the progress and the joys along the way that you're learning and growing, and to help come in on monthly Zoom calls where we do group coaching, where we bring in coaches from around the globe to be able to help you move forward in your healing journey. So I'd love to be able to have you inside that to be able to interact and gain that community of other people that understand the shit that you've been going through. If you haven't had a chance to be able to see the journal we produced recently, it's called From Fantasy to Reality. You can get it on Amazon, you get the links in the bio, anywhere like that. But it's got over 100 prompts inside it to be able to help you start to process life after the narcissist or getting free from the narcissist and also how to heal after that toxic relationship in your life. So feel free to be able to check that out. If you haven't had a chance to be able to check out the new podca podcast by myself and my wife, Kayla Taylor, then go on to Apple Podcasts and check out Trauma, Drama, and Life. It's a new podcast where we're trying to share and kind of open up different sections of our life to show you what's happened, how we landed where we are now, and some of the things along the way that's been the ups and the downs along this crazy life of being with a narcissist. That would be me, okay? Um, that's all I got right now. Anyways, diving in, want to talk about narcissists and how they mirror your concerns, how they mirror your issues how they mirror different insecurities, how they mirror different things in the moment to try to build a confusion and try to build a distract you. Well, a lot of times when we talk about mirroring, we normally talk about the idea of what they're reflecting back to you. We normally talk about the idea that a narcissist like sees a trait that you have, they're reflecting it back, they're pretending to be the same way, they, they look good, all this kind of stuff, and you fall in love with yourself. Right? Have you heard that? There's there's aspects of that that are true. There's aspects that kind of aren't, but there's there's aspects of that that are true. That people are like, oh, this person's reflecting back to me what I like, so therefore I'm gonna fall in love with them. That kind of thing. Okay. A lot of times you'll see those good traits reflected back, and in the form of like love bombing, in the form of like manipulation, and oftentimes the form of just making a mask. So it's even like the idea of like I'm not even going to need to reflect this back to you. I'm just adding it. And maybe I'm adding it because someone else had it too. Like there's a lot of different variations to that. But oftentimes when we talk about mirroring, it's reflecting back the good stuff, okay? What about the bad stuff? You know, sometimes narcissists don't just reflect the good, but a lot of times they reflect the bad. Maybe they're mirroring concerns that you have and responding the same exact way. We see this a lot of times in arguments in trying to work through like coaching or counseling or like when people go to counseling with a narcissist, side note, don't do that because the counselor doesn't typically know what's going on or the therapist doesn't really have an idea. A lot of times it sets you up for more abuse. So therapy with a narcissist, don't do it. Uh, Kayla and I have an episode on that on Trauma Drama Life. Anyways, moving on. So a lot of times they'll mirror those concerns and they'll respond as the same way that you would. Okay, so for instance, you come up and you're like, hey, like I'm not feeling safe in the relationship because I can't express myself. And they're like, I'm not feeling safe in the relationship because I can't express myself. And all of a sudden you're like, well, wait a second. Like, and you don't have a space or time or the, the effort in that moment to be able to go through and be able to share the stuff that's bothering you. Because all of a sudden they've come back with the same exact thing, almost like one up to you. 
Sometimes you'll see it with like communication issues where you're talking about like, like, why won't you talk to me? Like we haven't talked for a week and you're not communicating at all. Like, I just feel like we have communication issues. And then the nurse is like, yeah, we have communication issues. Like, I can't believe you're this way. We need to do this. I can't like, I can't talk to you. Like all this kind of stuff. They'll throw it back on you. And just like a side note, like that was one of the things that I did in the relationship with Kayla is a lot of my wife is a lot of times I would put that communication piece like back on her of like, we just need communication. Like we just need better communication. So like, we just need to get a therapy. We just need to work on this because it's all like your problem because you're not communicating with me. I would put a lot of it back on her, but at the same time I would create such an unsafe environment mentally and emotionally that she wasn't safe to be able to communicate. So I was creating communication issues and then blaming the communication issues on her, okay? Uh, a lot of times you'll see like mirroring concerns, you'll see it with like cheating. Hands down, one of the biggest ones is you'll have someone be like, I think you're cheating on me. Uh, no, I think you're cheating on me. Like they'll flip it right back. Okay. Another like crazy way, but you'll have a concern of like, wait a second, like you've been on your phone a lot, texting people and all your work friends are like out of town. Like all of your work friends are, you know, whatever, like you're, you're not engaged with work. So what's actually going on? Oh, it's this, like you're insecure, all this kind of stuff. And then I think you're the one cheating and they'll, they'll flip it. You know, sometimes people talk about like when a narcissist accuses you of cheating and you haven't cheated at all, then that's like self-confession. And a lot of times that is true. A lot of times the narcissist is trying to do that. And I, I have another YouTube video on that. But a lot of times the narcissist is trying to do that to be able to either feel better about themselves, to justify what they're already doing, or to make you feel bad so that you're not actually focused on what's actually going on on the other side of the relationship. Well, with cheating, a lot of times they'll push it back on you, be like, I think you're cheating on me, and it starts to distract you. Another one that a lot of times, well, they'll mirror concerns is the idea of isolation of others. So you'll be like, man, I don't get to see my friends. I don't get to see my family. They're like, what are you talking about? You saw them like a month ago. Like, why is that such a big deal? I don't get to go spend time with friends. Like, I never see my family. Like, it'll just, a lot of times it just keeps going, and it's the idea of like one-upping the other person. Another one that I'll give that I just thought of in talking about this was like with, with Kayla, one of the things was always either having a bad day or also like getting sick. And so anytime that she would get sick, I would get sick. My sickness would be a hundred times worse than her sickness. Like she could be like lying on the couch, not able to move. I could be perfectly fine, but sick. And I'm like, oh my gosh, the world is ending. Like it's, it's, it's all on me. Cause I need to focus back on me, you know? And she was taking away from that. Uh, the other aspect I just forgot about, so we'll just move on. Um, but like being sick, oh, a bad day. So like having like a bad day at work, she'd come home and she'd be like, oh, my day was so awful. And I'm like, yeah, you wouldn't believe my day, that kind of thing. So like mirroring the same stuff that she has, but it has to be bigger than hers. It has to be bigger than someone else's because again, it has to go back to me. Sometimes narcissists mirror concerns. Sometimes they mirror your insecurities. And this one really quick of like vulnerabilities. Uh, and a lot of times this is done in the grooming stage to be able to connect and to control you. So maybe different like issues that you have in life, maybe different things that you struggle with. They'll be like, oh yeah, I struggle with those too. So it's not always like the positive things, but the things that like connect of like, oh, I know what he's struggling with. I know what she's struggling with because I struggle with the same thing too. So you try to put more love, more help to be able to fill a void that you feel. And as a result, they start trapping you more. That's like the thought behind it. When I was talking about mirroring concerns and insecurities, a lot of times the whole idea about mirroring is to deflect what's actually happening in the moment. Now we see this happen a lot of times in actual arguments. Now I think one of the phrases that, would, that has been used about this is even the idea of like the straw man tactic where you build something up and destroy something that's, that's completely separate. You know, sometimes the narcissist is doing that in the idea of deflection. They're building something that is completely false and not even real, but they're building something to, to have you deflect that. Okay. So some of the reasons why they mirror like in this negative way. So like mirroring, like, Oh, well, I think you're cheating on me. Like throwing it back on you, like reflecting exactly what you put on them back on you is because they want to take away from the problem. They want to be able to like take down the aspect of like, okay, this problem that you feel is this high, isn't this high because you struggle with it too. Like I yell, well, also you yell. So like you need to understand that like this is just normal communication because of how we're both doing it. So uh, the idea is like, let me go ahead and bring that problem down so that you don't think it's a big deal. So I'm slowly discounting your feelings and your thoughts 
about it. Okay. The other aspect of mirroring to deflect is to distract you from the actual issue. Like you just caught him on his phone texting another woman. You just caught her, you know, showing up, you know, from being with another guy and immediately they flip it back on you. The whole idea is like, it takes you so long to be able to see like, wait a second, like they just flipped it back on me. We've had this giant argument and I don't even know what we're arguing about anymore. I don't even know what the conversation's based on because what they did is they put you on the defensive and you spent so much time defending yourself about something you didn't do that doesn't give you time to actually see what's actually happening on the other side. A lot of times you're focusing so much on proving that you didn't do something that you'll forget or they'll walk away from the conversation. You'll be like, either I don't even remember what we talked about or they still never answered my question. They still never gave me an answer, a logical, reasonable answer of what just happened, okay? So mirroring like positive or negative like never gets around to the real problem. Like it's always a reflection, but you never actually see internally of what's going on inside. You never see the narcissist and what they're actually doing because the whole goal of mirroring, no matter if it's positive, it's negative, whatever it is, it's either meant to one up you, it's meant to either connect early on, you know, to be able to connect and build that trauma bond, or it's made to be able to distract you. Like anything I can do to be able to get away from the issue so that I'm not the one in, that's, that's the problem and so that no one's focused on me. If I can do any of that to focus on the next thing, moving on, trying to get away from it, and if I can mirror and reflect that back to you so you have to deal with it, I no longer have to deal with it, and now it's your problem. If you've dealt with this a bunch or if you've gone through this, understand first off, you're not crazy, you're not alone, you're not hopeless, reach out for help.